Good morning and welcome to worship with the Congregation of the Presbyterian Church at Peace Chapel. We are so glad you are here, whether in person here in the chapel or out in Zoom world, and glad you can be with us as we worship today. If you are out in Zoom world, you are seeing the um, bulletin on your screen and it will keep scrolling through right through worship so that you can follow along. We invite you to read aloud any lines you see in bold print and sing along with the songs, even though you are muted so that you can be taking part in worship with us. We will turn the mutes off when it's time to share joys and concerns before the prayer time. And then again at the end of worship so that we can share in a moment or two of fellowship before we go on with our day. If you're out in Zoom world, you're not going to be able to come up to the plate at offertory time, but we do invite you to make use of the Vanco, V-A-N-C-O, Vanco Mobile Faith Engagement app, Vanco Mobile Faith Engagement. If you put that into your Google search or into your phone's app store, it will show you the free app for that and help you set that up. And once you've set that up, put in Presbyterian Church at Peace Chapel, and it will help you set something up to give electronically if you wish. Otherwise, you can always write a check and put it in an envelope and send it to 1212 Livingston Avenue in North Brunswick, 08902. Children are encouraged to have paper and pencil or crayons handy to draw pictures during the sermon. And if you're out in Zoom world and consider yourself a child at heart and want to do that, that's just fine with all of us. So, as we're ready to get started, I'm going to ask Chris to play through our gathering song, and then we'll sing through it probably three times, because that's what we've been doing. And about the second time, I'll ask everybody to stand up who's here in the chapel. worship God. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. <coughs> I cry out loud to my God, out loud so God will hear me. You were hidden in the hands of Moses and Aaron. You led your people like a flock of sheep. Chris is going to play through the psalm and then we will all sing. close and hear God's truth, God's teaching. Come share the wisdom and the word. Come listen close to mother's preaching and father's sharing what they heard. Then tell those coming of God's marvels. Let minds be sparked and spirits stirred. 
gather to hear God's truth, God's teaching. We share the wisdom and the word. Hear of our Maker's declaration to wrestling Jacob and his heirs. Stories of promise and salvation of all the faithful love God shares to pass through every generation with growth in common and deferred gathered to hear God's truth, God's teaching. We share the wisdom and the word. Hear of our arrogant resisting. <coughs> Keep on spoiling for a fight. While God who loves us keep insisting that we be turned back toward the right. Through life past primal cruel existing, past merely following some hurt, gathered to hear God's truth, God's teaching. We share the wisdom and the word. Hear how I am brought need and manna to those redeemed from life as slaves led them through desert and savannah showed them a dry path through the waves with fire and cloud great god began a long trek of blessings undeterred Gather to hear God's truth, God's teaching. We share the wisdom and the word. Beloved in Christ, you are truly blessed. God is with you. May God be with you as well. Please be seated for prayer. And let us now confess our sins and leave our burdens at God's feet so that we may go forth free and forgiven, living out the promise of our baptism. Let us do all this beginning with the prayer that we find on our screens and in our leaflets. Let us pray. Creator of love and life, you call us to show your love as partners in your ongoing creation. But your world is complex. Often it is difficult to know how your love should appear. Forgive us for our fear to take a stand. Forgive us for our failures to make difficult decisions. Forgive us for hiding in talk of love that does not act. Help us to be bold but not belligerent. Help us to be decisive, but not divisive. Help us in our love to be unified by the Spirit who fills us. Listen to these words that we may trust from the prophet Isaiah. God will banish the pall of doom hanging over all people. The shadow of doom darkening all nations. God will banish death forever. And God will wipe the tears from every face, remove every sign of disgrace from God's people wherever they are. 
Yes, God says so. Jesus is the rock, the rock that lasts. Jesus is the rock that lasts. My soul has found a resting place. Jesus is the rock that lasts. Jesus is the rock, the rock that lasts. Jesus is the rock that lasts. My soul has found a resting place. Jesus is the rock that lasts. Believe this good news and live in peace. We will love the Lord our God with all our heart and soul and mind, and we will love our neighbors as ourselves. As we live in peace, we remember the words of Paul. Work together, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Beloved in Christ, the peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. Let us greet one another with a hand of fellowship and the peace of Christ. Peace. Peace, Gabe. Peace, Martha. Peace, Tom. Peace of Christ. Peace. Peace. Peace, Helen. Jesus is the rock, the rock that lasts. Jesus is the rock that lasts. My soul has found a resting place. Jesus is the rock that lasts. Jesus is the rock, the rock that lasts. Jesus is the rock that lasts. My soul has found a resting place. Jesus is the rock that lasts. Please be seated. We're t at the time when we visit with young children before we have Bible stories and sermons and all that fun stuff. So if you are a young child out in Zoom world, pay special attention now. We have another story today about Joshua. We had a story about Joshua last week, remember? And he built a pile, of, had the people build a pile of stones where they crossed the river on the dry ground. Well, today we have another story, and it's from the other end of the book of Joshua. Last week it was from chapter 3, so it was almost the beginning. And this one is from chapter 24. So it's almost the end, and lots of stuff has happened, and they have been moving into this promised land, but they've been finding the people were already living there, and they've been kind of chasing the people out who were already living there. And sometimes, though, having people stay and, and moving in next to them. So there's been a lot of stuff going on. The walls fell at Jericho, and all sorts of things have been happening. And it's a wonderful story to read. But we're going to be reading now all the way at the end. Have you ever had a time when somebody says to you, Look at all this great stuff, especially, you know, this is the sort of thing that grown-ups would say to you. You know, maybe your mom or your dad, you know, every day we come and we clean up after you. Every day we make sure you've got food to eat. And all we want you to do is this one thing. Eh, grown-ups ever say that to you? I'll bet sometimes it happens. Well, in a way... That's what's going to be happening in this story. Because Joshua is going to start out reminding them of all the things, everybody, of all the things that God has been doing for them. Not only since they crossed the river and came into, and came into the promised land, but before that when they were on their journey, and before that when they got out of Egypt, and before that going all the way back, Abraham. 
And Abraham was their ancestor who had probably lived about, oh, 600 to 1,000 years before this. So that's a long time. We're gonna, I'm not just going to hold you responsible for I cleaned up your room today, but I'm going to hold you responsible for the fact that your great-great-great-great-grandmother cleaned up my great-great-great-grandmother's room a century ago. And you should feel guilty about that. That's a lot to be thinking about. But Joshua's going to do that. And then Joshua's going to say, you have to choose. You have to choose who you're going to serve. Are you going to serve one of the uh, gods of all these other peoples who live, still live around us? Or are you going to serve our God? And you're going to hear what they say. And he's going to tell them, no, you can't do that. You're not good enough to serve our God. You're going to mess up. You're going to make mistakes. And this is a different kind of speech that sometimes we get from grown-ups. Sometimes we get it. Sometimes we get it from people like coaches on sports teams. You can't beat them. You're not good enough. And so we all get mad and we say, oh, yes, we can. And we'll show you. So it will play even harder. Well, he, Joshua's going to do a little of that too. But it's all about not only whether we say we're going to serve God, but whether we really do it and what we do and how we change our lives. How do we live during the week that shows that we're serving God and we're just not doing whatever we feel like? Hmm? How do, you know, so, you know, going to church on Sunday, while that's a really good thing, that doesn't count for what we do during the week. What do we do during the week that shows that we're living differently? Because that, it turns out, is what God is worried about. What do we do that shows what we're doing? So I want you to listen to this story. And during the sermon, if you want, you can draw me a picture of how you really live differently or about the story if you want. Okay? Now, before we have Bible stories in church, we always say a prayer. And at the end of the prayer, we always say amen. So the grown-ups are going to help me with the prayer. But when we get to the end, you help with the amen. Okay? Let's pray. We are in need of new hope. God, you answer with your word. We need to be comforted. God, you answer with your word. We need to be open to joy and love. God, you answer with your word. Let your word find a home in us. And we all say, Amen. Listen for a word from God in this story from the book of Joshua. Joshua called together all the tribes of Israel at Shechem. He called in the elders, chiefs, judges, and officers. They presented themselves before God. Then Joshua addressed all the people. This is what God, the God of Israel, says. A long time ago, your ancestors, Terah and his sons, Abraham and Nahor, lived to the east of the river Euphrates. They worshipped other gods. Then, God says, I took your father Abraham from beyond the river and led him through all the land of Canaan and made his offspring many. I gave him Isaac, and to Isaac I gave Jacob and Esau. I gave Esau the hill country of Sire to possess but Jacob and his children went down to Egypt. I sent Moses and Aaron. I hit Egypt hard with plagues and then led you out of there. I brought your ancestors out of Egypt. They came to the sea, the Egyptians in hot, hot pursuit with chariots and cavalry to the very edge of the Red Sea. Then they cried out for help to God. God put a cloud between you and the Egyptians and then let the sea loose on them. It drowned them. You watched the whole thing with your own eyes, what I did to Egypt. And then you lived in the wilderness for a long time. I gave you the, a land on which you had not labored and towns that you had not built. And you live in them. You eat the fruit of vineyards and olive groves that you did not plant. 
So now, fear God. Worship God in total commitment. Get rid of the gods of your ancestors worshipped on the far side of the river, the Euphrates, and in Egypt. You worship God. If you decide that it's a bad thing to serve God, then choose a God you'd rather serve. And do it today. Choose one of the gods your ancestors worshipped from the country beyond the river, or one of the gods of the Amorites on whose land you're now living. As for me and my family, we'll serve God. The people answered, we'll never forsake God, never. We'll never leave God to worship other gods. God is our God. God brought up our ancestors from Egypt and from slave conditions. God did all those great signs while we watched. God has kept God's eye on us all along the roads we've traveled and among the nations we've passed through. Just for us, God drove out all the nations, Amorites and all, who lived in the land. Count us in. We too are going to serve God who is our God. Then Joshua told the people, you can't do it. You're not able to worship God. God is a holy God. God is a jealous God. God won't put up with your fooling around and sinning. When you leave God and take up the worship of foreign gods, God will turn right around and come down on you hard. God will put an end to you and after all the good God has done for you. But the people told Joshua, no, no, we serve God. Then Joshua said to the people, you are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen God for yourselves to worship God. And they said, we are witnesses. Joshua said, now get rid of all the foreign gods you have with you. Focus your hearts on God, the God of Israel. The people answered Joshua, we will serve God and God we will obey. Joshua cut a covenant for the people that day there at Shechem. He made it official, spelling it out in detail. God wrote these words in the scroll of the law of God. And he took a large stone and set it up there under the oak that was in the holy place of God. God spoke to all the people. This stone is a witness against us. It has heard every word that God has said to us. It is standing witness in case you, against you in case you aren't true to your God. Then Joshua sent the people away to their inheritances. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> As for me and my family, we will serve God. But Joshua doesn't seem to be too sure about the rest of them. Will you serve God when it's been a very long time since the last pillar of fire or parted sea? Will you serve God when there haven't been any armies chasing you in years? Will you serve God when you're safe and cozy and secure for a long time? When you've met a cute Amorite girl from a nice family who just can't give up her congregation so it's easier for you to go to worship with her? Will you serve God when you've forgotten this land and this town weren't always yours? This is what Joshua asks each and all of them. Because Joshua has been at this for a while, all the way back into Exodus when he was Moses' assistant. And Joshua knows that God won't put up with the people being wishy-washy. God won't put up with fair day believers who are just in it for the good times and the cool rescues. And God won't put up with anybody who just uses their religion for social status. That's why God doesn't want people shifting back and forth, by the way. God will respect somebody being a good pagan, truly believing in that pagan religion, even if they're wrong. 
But just believing in whatever you want to believe to get the good job or the nice house, well, that won't fly. Joshua thinks it's because God is temperamental and jealous. But we, from a perspective coming after Jesus, know that it is because God, for God, believing is everything. The believing is what's important. The faith makes all the difference. And the faith will show itself in changed lives. How we use our money, our property, our stuff, reveals who we truly serve. Because it's not the things that we talk about that are most important to us people. It's the things we can touch and feel and all that stuff. As for me and my family, we will serve God. But will we serve God when putting a little more in the vacation fund each week will get us the really good passes at Disney World. Will we serve God by loving everyone and turning the other cheek all the time when we can't quite tell the terrorist enemies from the other people who don't look like us and so it might be easier to have the army go in and kill everybody? Will we serve God and work toward food and housing and health care for everyone when we'd really like our taxes to be lower? And after all, our health insurance is just fine. Will we serve God with everything we have when we're sure God won't notice won't really notice us holding back enough so that we can get a pool this year. Or maybe a little bigger pool than what we planned on. Will we serve God with everything we are when we think that 1% of the federal budget is far too much to be spending on foreign aid? Count to us in, the Israelites said. We too are going to serve God who is our God. Fortunately, we all get to choose more than once. And we can turn ourselves around when we get it wrong. How we use our money, how we use our property, how we use our stuff day in and day out, reveals who we truly serve. Are we using what we have, what God has given us entirely for ourselves? Then that's who we serve. Fortunately, God lets us grow in our service little by little. It's what we need to th be thinking about this week as we get ready for next Sunday. Can we increase our giving by just 1% this year? By the way, if we give $25 a week, that's 25 cents a week more. Can we find one more quarter? So it's time to pray about who we will serve this week who we will serve next week and the week after it all the way through the next year. It's time for us to choose and to pray. How will we grow in serving God? Let us pray. Write these words in our hearts, dear God, and help them to grow up in us the fruits of your spirit, to the honor and praise of your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Chris is going to play through the hymn, and then we will all sing.
on the Lord's side, who will serve the King? Who will be God's helpers, other lives to bring? Who will leave the world side? Who will face the foe? Who is on the Lord's side, who for God by thy call of mercy, by thy grace divine, we are on the Lord's side, Savior, we are thine. Not for weight of glory, not for crown and palm, enter we the army, raise the warrior. But for love that claimeth lives for whom he died, those who Jesus nameth must be on his side. By thy love constraining, by thy grace divine, we are on the Lord's side. Thine. This may be the conflict, strong may be the foe, but the king's own army none can overthrow. Round God's standard ranging, victory is secure, for God's truth unchanging makes the triumph sure. Joyfully enlisting by thy grace divine, we are on the Lord's side, Savior, we are thine. And now let us affirm our faith using the words from the Apostles' Creed as they appear in your leaflets or on your screens. Christians, what do we believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Again, I'd like to welcome everybody to worship this morning. I'm glad you can be here with us. And um, come on. There you go. I knew you could do it. I'm glad you can be here and worship with us this morning. We're coming to our time when we share joys and concerns before we share our offerings and then share in prayer. And as we get ready for that, I invite folks out in Zoom World to turn off their mutes if they've got joys and concerns to share. If you're on a phone in Zoom World, you do that by pressing star six. If you're on your computer, you go down, you go down to the bottom of the screen and you find the little thing with the microphone with the slash through it and you click on that and it'll, the slash will go away. You're all set. While you're all doing that, I'm going to just announce a few things that are coming up because we have a busy few weeks, the next few weeks. First of all, um, next Sunday, we do have our special worship for Consecration Sunday here in person at Peace Chapel and in Zoom, and we'll be having a special time of fellowship after. So um, I hope that lots of folks can be here present in Peace Chapel as we recommit ourselves and recommit our stewardship for another year, and we will have spent this week praying about whether we can grow a little bit in our stewardship and in our faith and in our work for God. Um, 
We'll be talking about all of that. We will have estimate of giving cards to, turn, to fill out and turn in. If you don't feel comfortable turning in an estimate of giving card, don't do it. Nobody will chase after you. Um, if you do, it's really a commitment between you and God. The numbers are used to help guide the session in making the budget, but other than that, nobody's going to come with a bill and say, well, you're this many, you're this many dollars behind at week 14 or something like that either. It's just an estimate. It helps us plan, but it also helps all of us to be recommitting ourselves and growing in our own stewardship. So all of that happens next Sunday in the morning. Um, and you'll be hearing more about that in a couple minutes and then in a letter this week as we get ready. Also next Sunday, we have a session meeting, session members at 1130. We did not have our meeting last, last month because of a combination of travel and various manifestations of um, local plague that hit a few of us, including me. But, um, and then we had to have a makeup meeting. We can't really do that with this meeting. We need to have a regular meeting. So let's be sure we're there. Let's be sure we've done our reading. This is our last meeting of the calendar year. We will not have to have another meeting until after Christmas if we get this, if we get this um, right. So let's hope that we can get this right. Um, so that's, that's then. And then you'll see something that's been added just recently to the calendar. A week from Tuesday, we have our Interfaith Thanksgiving worship, and it's going to be down in New Brunswick at the New Brunswick Performing Arts Center. And we've been invited to join in with, still with all of the New Brunswick churches, even though we are technically not a New Brunswick church. The New Brunswick Interfaith Association has decided, well, we'll, over, we'll overlook wherever the town line is for a while. And so we've been invited to join them. And a big part of that, that gathering is going to be built around sharing different kinds of bread. And we'll be sitting at tables and we'll be sharing bread. And so in order to have bread, somebody's got to make some bread. So next, this is the, the new addition in the calendar because this has just come up next Sunday afternoon. Um, there's going to be a community baking workshop at Ansha Ameth Memorial Temple. Um, they've got a professional baker who is going to be there, and they've got a commercial kitchen at the temple. So they're going to be showing people how to make challah and how to make pumpkin bread and orange cranberry bread and different kinds of bread for this thing. And we're all going to make, and everybody who can go is going to make breads. And then they'll, they'll all show up on Tuesday at the Performing Arts Center, but you'll also get the recipes for the breads. You're going to get a little booklet with the recipe if you go and you participate. Um, you're going to um, learn a lot about this baking bread. You're going to do it with your neighbors from the other churches and temples and from the Islamic Center as we all do this together. So everybody is invited. If you can go, please go session members in order that you're not too late for the if you really want to go and bake bread session members make sure you've read all your reports before the meeting and we go in and we just approve the reports and we get things done and we'll get you all out in time that you're only a couple minutes late for the baking workshop come on we can do that session we can do that and be done with session meetings for the whole year now shh. The whole year only lasts till the end of next month, I know, but shh, don't tell anybody that part. Think about, oh, a whole rest of the year with no session. Um, we can do that if we all work at it. Other people, you don't have to worry about the session meeting. Yeah, in the Saturday email that went out yesterday and then the one that goes out next Saturday, there's a link to click on so that you can register. They need everybody to register for this so they've got enough stuff so that we're sure that things are safe and secure because we live in an age where sometimes things aren't always safe. So all of that's going to be happening. Then November 21st, a week from Tuesday, we'll have the Interfaith Celebration, 7 o'clock at the Performing Arts Center down on Livingston Avenue in the square. And then um, on the 23rd, which is Thanksgiving Day, there will be a neighborhood Thanksgiving meal at the Bayard Street Church everybody's welcome. Um, and then on the 26th, 
we will be back here for worship for the Sunday of the Reign of Christ, the last Sunday in our liturgical calendar for the year. We begin a brand new calendar, the beginning of December with Advent. And then there's a Presbytery meeting. So a lot going on in the next couple of weeks. Um, I hope that folks can take advantage of as much as they can. Now, do we have anybody who has any special prayer concerns or joys to be shared? We should be remembering um, Carol in our prayers. Carol is really struggling with her arthritis and waiting for her surgery. We should remember Bassie and Lawrence and Cornelia and Yasmin as they try to take care of her. Um, Bassie was home for the hospital for three days and then had to go back to the hospital and she's been there the last three weeks. So let's keep her in our prayers and the whole family there. Is there anybody else we need to keep in our prayers? Okay, go for it, Sam. Prayers to God for peace on the planet. Yes. We do need, we need peace on the planet. We need wholeness. Pray for the people of Gaza and Israel and all the surrounding nations that they don't make this an even bigger mess than it already is. Um, pray for the people of Ukraine and the soldiers of Russia. So many places where there is pain and violence right now. Martha. Um, continued prayer for Renee and Brooke, um, family, friends in Louisiana, for their physical well-being. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> this morning I was listening to a story about a, a, a corporation that was a, a business that was being challenged by another business. And as they sat in their meeting, everyone around the table was saying, oh, we have to get bigger, we have to get bigger. We have to be as big as the other one. And the CEO slapped his hand on the table and said, we don't need to be bigger, we just need to be better. Because better may lead us to being bigger or whatever we need to do to be successful. And I immediately thought of the chapel, PCNB, how often we've talked about how we need to get bigger, we need to get bigger, we need to get bigger. Um, perhaps our focus should be towards maybe we need to be better. I don't know what that means necessarily for us. But as I thought about it, I could think of one or two ways my relationship to the chapel could be better. And I would suggest that maybe as we approach Thanksgiving and are th so thankful for this opportunity to be here, that we each think about what being one little bit better might mean to our congregation here. Wait, Helen, because the world outside can't hear you. I pray for Chris's health. Oh, yes. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Chris has been struggling the last few weeks. He's just got a cold now, but still not been fun. Anybody else? Gabe. What? Oh, there, there's, uh, he just wants me to announce this. He doesn't. Okay. It is, a, I guess it's a joy and not a concern. <laughs> Gabe brought pie, and so after worship, we're going to have pie. So, you know, those of you who wonder why it's not just the same to stay at home and um, watch on Zoom, and I know sometimes you need to, and that's good that we have that, but if you're just doing it because you think then I don't have to go out and get to the chapel, we get pie. 
<laughs> so um, just keep that in mind. Okay, and listen to these words from the letter to the Hebrews. Do, do good and share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. And so let us now with gladness present our tithes and our offerings from our life and from our labor unto our God. As I said, next Sunday is Consecration Sunday, and um, last week Jonathan helped us start getting ready for Consecration Sunday by talking about what stewardship meant to him. And this week it's Barbara's turn, except that Gabe talked to me about pie and then I forgot about everything else. Um, so Barbara, would you come and share? Yes, you do. I think he got it all set up. Yep. Because I trust that Jesus is my Lord and Savior, because God has walked with me through my entire life and given me all that I have needed, because I feel tremendous gratitude for all my blessings. I give my offering with a cheerful heart. I personally pledge in order that the managers of our church's income and expenditures are better able to pay our bills and plan our budget. Um, I would, speaking about giving with a cheerful heart, I would like to read a few verses of scripture from 2 Corinthians um, chapter, six, chapter 9, verses 4 through 9. But remember this, if you give a little, you will get a little. A farmer who plants just a few seeds will get only a small crop. But if, the, if he plants much, he will reap much. Everyone was, must make up his own mind as to how much he should give. Don't force anyone to give more than he really wants to, for cheerful givers are the ones God prizes. 
God is able to make it up to you by giving you everything you need and more so that there will not only be enough for your own needs, but plenty left over to give joyfully to others. So I would like to pray with the first song of a, the first verse of a little song that we used to sing in Sunday school many years ago. We give thee but thine own, whatever our gifts may be. All that we have is thine alone. Our trust, O Lord, from thee. Amen. 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 Step up to the plate, be a cheerful giver, and pledge of your Barbara, this is yours. Barbara! That goes with you. Yep. Hey, notice that our joy, the joining in part of our prayer comes at the end of the prayer today and not just not a bunch of times during the prayer. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. God, who is with us in each generation, who calls us as your own, doing wonders among us. We thank you and praise you for your love, and we offer you our prayers. We have been people who rebel, who have wandered from your way, yet you bring us back as your people redeemed and restored. We pray for your holy church for this congregation gathered here, for our sisters and brothers in and around North and New Brunswick, for churches of the Presbytery of the Coastlands and the Presbyterian Church USA, her colleges, seminaries, missions, and ministries. We have been people threatened by terror, threatened by our own spite and short-sightedness. Yet you have defended and saved us. As citizens of this broken world, we pray for all the people of this world, especially for those who are in places of conflict or danger this day, for the people of the Ukraine and the soldiers of Russia for people in Syria and Sudan and Somalia, the people of Gaza, the people of Israel, the soldiers in Israel, and those who are caught in the path of the fighting. We pray for all those who give their lives, women and men, for the safety of their brothers and sisters and neighbors, wherever they might be. And we pray for those who lead us, for our president and representatives, our governor and legislators, people who administer the affairs of our nation, our state, our cities and towns, and those who administer nations and states and cities and towns all around this world, that whether they profess your name or not, whether they seem to be doing what you wish them to or not, they might yet lead us into your truth, your freedom, your peace. We have been people desperately in need of grace and mercy. And you have filled our lives 
letting your love fall from heaven upon us. As people showered by your grace, we pray for those in special need of grace this day. We pray especially for Carol, for Bassie, for Lawrence and Cornelia and Yasmin as they care for her, for Renee, for Brooke, for Chris, for those who are, who are traveling, that they may travel safely. For those who mourn. For those who struggle with loneliness and despair. For everyone whose names we remember in our hearts. And for those whose names we don't know yet. God, who is with us in each generation, who fills us with your mercy, hear these our prayers. Remake us as your people, humble and faithful, and let us give ourselves to you each day. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Chris is going to play through the hymn and then we will all sing. a holy nation. You are God's own people in order that together we may proclaim the mighty acts of the one who calls us out of darkness and into God's marvelous light. And so may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be and abide with us all this day and always. And may all God's people say together, Amen. Amen.